When I first launched Undivided, I told you guys that this was going to be more than just a place to discuss politics, that this is a mission. This is a mission dedicated to giving common sense a comeback and as a result, helping to bring our communities and our country closer together. One of the things that we decided to do from the very beginning is to have an undivided charity of the year, an organization in our communities working to bring people closer together, working to improve lives. And today, based on your nominations and your votes, I am happy to announce the undivided 2022 charity of the year. Hello, yes. Angel. Oh my gosh, look at your big melon. There are few things that bring us together, quite like dogs. They don't judge what people judge. They love you unconditionally, 24 seven. They don't care what you look like. They don't care what kind of mood you're in. Uh, they don't care what kind of bad day. When you come home, that dog's gonna put a smile on your face. Good boy, release. Hi, Elliot. There you go, good boy. Perhaps that's why Denise has dedicated her life to them. I've been training dogs ever since I can remember. I just didn't do it professionally until later on in life. Um, my first collie, I would think I was third grade, and I grew up in the generation of Lassie. And um, then in the eighth grade, I got another collie, and I would try to figure out how I could train her to do all those neat things that Lassie did, you know? And so I've just always had an interest in, and I was a weird kid and I didn't, you know, I was oddball and I didn't have friends and my dog was my friend. And so it was just me and her. Heel, side, good boy. After a career showing dogs, Denise had an idea. She wondered whether she could train her collie named Brigadoon to be a service dog for her mom. I was looking at him one day and I said, you know, I bet I could train you to be a balance dog for mom when she comes up here. So the and this conversation went with my husband and what have you. I just decided I was gonna close my pet dog training business and do service dogs. Not knowing what in the world the future would bring for me. Eighteen years later, the walls at Brigadoon service dogs in Bellingham tell the stories of all the dogs they've trained and, of course, all their humans. Veterans, children, and adults who rely on those dogs to help them live a more full and rewarding life. If I fall, I'm just going to put myself on the ground for this, but um, if I fall, it's not um, easy for me to get back up unless I have something to hold on to. Um, so I use him. Can't be brace. Can't brace. Good boy. There you go. See, now it's easy for me to get back up. My name is Earl Helmick, uh, Desert Storm and Iraqi Freedom veteran. The moment I really felt I needed a service dog is when I was talking with my psychologist and uh, they were wanting to keep me on all these different drugs and I really didn't want the drugs. I wanted to kind of return to normal and do it without medication. And having a service dog helped me achieve that. Before I had my service dog, I was actually in fear a lot of falling. I found my life getting smaller and smaller and choosing not to go do things. And in this day and age, you can have everything delivered. You never have to go out anymore. And that makes for a pretty small life. Since I got my service dog brother, what has happened is I feel brave enough to go out and participate in things. Look behind you quick. I know you probably look at that wall a lot. Oh, I do, especially when I'm down and I want to give up. I, I look at all these pictures and all the people that I've helped, that we have helped, Brigadoon and my staff. And there's some veterans up here that I've gotten very close to. There's one that I'm still in touch with that's waiting for his dog next month. He gets it. It's a white husky named Stout. And he lives in eastern Washington. And I, uh, I'm in touch with him weekly. We send each other pictures and, you know, smiley faces. Because he's, he's tried to commit suicide before. You know, some of our teenagers, I have three of them in mine, had cerebral palsy. I met them when they were like in junior high, going into high school. And they're going away to college out of state now and stuff because of their dog. They couldn't have done that before. They depended on their parents. Can you imagine being a sophomore in high school, walking around with a walker, and because you can't walk without it, and the kids that tease you, and then you get a dog, now you're standing a little bit taller and you and your other friend that has cerebral palsy is now driving. Now you don't have to go shopping with mom anymore. 
it means a lot. Changes your life. Changes your life, totally. And you are so cute, oh my gosh. Brigadoon also has several prison programs in Washington where incarcerated veterans help train dogs and in turn, the dogs help them. I really like working with the incarcerated veterans a lot. They're a little embarrassed because they're in prison in the first place for some stupid thing they did when they got back from the war um, that landed them there. And so this is their way of giving back. You know, I mean, they're, they fought for our country, you know, and now they're in prison for whatever they did. And so now this gives them a little bit more structure and they know a lot of their dogs are training or going to veterans and it's kind of a win-win situation. None of these stories would be possible without your help. Brigadoon relies on community donations to cover the cost of each dog. We are a nonprofit. We depend on the community's contribution. Uh, it's $30,000 to put one single dog. And when we are looking for sponsors for our veteran dogs, we don't charge the veterans for the dogs at all. And we charge a third of that cost to civilians. Small contributions, even a monthly donation of $25 a month helps a lot. Well, a little enthusiastic. But if you don't have money to give right now, there are other ways to help give back, especially for dog lovers. Puppy raising is another thing that we really need help with. Uh, if you can't commit to eight months of puppy raising, because it's a very important part of that service dog's journey, maybe people who are local at least can be a weekend wagger, where that means you come like on a Friday, for example, and take a dog home for the weekend just to give them an in-home experience. We have a litter of puppies. We should be having a litter of puppies here in June. And people can come and cuddle them because they need to be handled. You mean I can volunteer, can volunteer to cuddle to dogs? Cuddle puppies, <laughs> yes. Oh, you are cute. You get three. There's just something about the bond between dogs and their humans that transcends any divide we might have. Your politics, your income, your race, your ability, none of it matters to them. It's a lesson we could all stand to learn from our best friends. And it's why Undivided is so proud to name Brigadoon Service Dogs as our 2022 Charity of the Year. I really believe in Brigadoon a lot. Our mission is to give independence to people with, with uh, disabilities of all kinds. To me, there's nothing better as far as medicine to change somebody's outlook on life. Dogs are zen. Good job. You're a good job. Yes, you are. If you would like to find out how you can help our undivided charity of the year, visit brigadoondogs.org and you can help lift up an organization doing tremendous work in our communities and helping to bridge divides every single day.